Amutter and FM Reaper. That was a clip I'm using CSI in a mastering environment. This video is going to look at some of the programming involved in that and some of my favourite features of CSI. So first of all, let's download the latest version of Reaper, 7.15. And if you use the link in the description, download the latest version of CSI. Quite easy to install. I'll just show you the readme file. At the moment, this version is 3.2.3. .3. It's ever evolving. That's where we're at just now. And it gives you the download instructions as well as the install instructions for Windows and for Mac. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to take the dylib and drop that into user plugins. And then grab the CSI folder and just drop it into Reaper resources folder. Now let's set ourselves up in Reaper. Go to Reaper preferences, MIDI devices. You need to disable the MIDI device you're going to use for CSI. Odd as it sounds, just disable that. Scroll down to Control OSC Web and click on the CSurf integrator. Edit that. Go to the home page. That's all there'll be at the moment. That's how it's set up. I run it from the TCP. If you go to the wiki page or play around with this, see which preferences you prefer. These are the ones I use. Now add the MIDI device you previously disabled in Reaper preferences. And make sure you give this a name or it will create this and it'll look blank white against blank white so you won't see it. Once you added that, you can then go on and add the assignments. Automatically recognize you've chosen MCU. I'm going to use eight channels. I can choose which surface. That will then automatically pick the zone folder and the effect zone folder, both of which you can change. So once you've made your selection, close that down and you should have CSI up and running. For the next part of the video, I'm going to run a keys program that shows which hotkeys I'm using on the screen so you don't miss anything. Um, it's all part of a hotkey system that I use, which I explain in other videos. Control and T creates a new track. I've programmed mine to come up with name written in them. Ironically, I'm not going to name it. This is how it'll look with no modifications to the file. So mute, solo and record arm work. Pan is being displayed on the bottom. You can rotary push to edit the width. So rotary push just toggles between width and pan. Using modifiers, you can have a different set of actions and a different set of displays. On the standard install, adding control as a modifier changes the lower display to show you the automation selection. I've kept and expanded on this in my workflow. I'll show you what I did with the other modifiers and then I'll show you the text that program that. I wanted a quicker way of getting the pan from left center to right and the width to wide, reverse and mono. So adding shift and pressing the rotary I've programmed that to do that on the push of a button. Add option, same push of a button. This is a nice quick way of finding the center point for both of these pan and width. I'm not going to go into huge detail, just give you a flavor of how the programming works. So the folder structure is in the bottom of that window. That's where the CSI folder is in the Reaper resources folder. Open the track zone with a plain text editor, has to be plain text. Display upper track name and display lower pan. I added shift as a modifier. So the lower display still showed the pan and the rotary push took me between point zero, half and full, which gave me the left, center and right. This is how I got the same result for the width. If you add hold to a button, you can add a whole set of extra actions when that occurs. So I'm going to look at select. Select on its own just selects the individual track. Select and hold is programmed to auto zoom the time selection and the track. Select and hold again and it'll toggle the track back, but leave the time selection maximized on the screen. The general effects required in mastering are EQ, compression, drive and a limiter. Using CSI, it's really quick to compare two plugins to each other or switch them on and off. So I've got my eight favorites per channel and I'll show you how I switch between those in a second. And in the spirit of easy comparison, I also wanted to create really simple routines so I could put the EQ before the compressor, after the compressor, drive before or after. And the folder structure system works really well. That's why the mix is at the bottom of the screen and it works its way up to the top to the monitoring. Why is it so easy to have so many effects per channel and how do I access them? If I select, say, the EQ channel, the plugin button goes to the plugin zone. This now displays all eight of the plugins and they're all switched on and off with the record ready buttons. Same for every channel, every plugin. This is a fast and simple way of being able to compare or switch in and out your plugins. 
and the red record lights, making it clear which plugins are on and off without having to look up at the screen. This works exactly the same on any channel that's got effects on. If I go to the compressor channel and go to the plugin zone, switch them all on and off there, you can quickly compare your choice of compressors and see which one you like the most for your track. Let's change the order of these effects. So the EQ is second at the moment. I remove that from being a folder, push it up into the limiter folder, and then push the rest of the tracks up into that. Now I've got mix drive compression EQ last. The way this works is if you set every channel to master out, when you put it in a folder, it then becomes sent to the parent folder. This is really useful if you've got two or three effects on a channel, say two or three EQs maybe, and you want to hear them after your compressor. This is a very quick visual way of doing something like that. I'm always looking to create the simplest and most flexible workflow. How I think of modifiers is a good example of that. Control in any button is to do with editing tracks. Alt in any button is to do with editing the audio or item. And shift is usually some kind of delete. In Reaper Actions, you can have fade into the edit cursor and fade out from the edit cursor. I can move the edit cursor with the jog wheel. Because I'm editing an item, I need to use the Alt modifier. So Alt and Left will create the fade in. I can keep moving the edit cursor and pressing Left to change that. Up will cycle through the types of fade ins. If I didn't have the Alt key pressed, the left and right and up and down button could do something completely different. So to do the fade out, Alt's latched, remember. I'm going to run to the end of the track. So I'm going to fade out from by using the right button and then cycle through the fade outs with the down button. Keeping in mind that shift is usually to do with delete or remove. So shift alt left and right removes the fade in and fade out. The majority of my videos are about explaining how to program CSI. Some of my videos you can copy and paste text from. My EQ and compression videos all contain links to that particular EQ and compression zone file that I'm using. So you can just take that and put it into your system. I also have templates for EQ and compression. These templates are exactly the same layout I use for compression EQ, etc. These are useful for effects that I haven't covered in the videos that you might have. Download the templates and you can fill them in yourself. Automap isn't presently working and filling this in is actually a lot easier than you might imagine. You go into Reaper and open your action list and search for CSI toggle right parameters. Okay, highlight that and then run it. Open any plugin that you'd like to get the information about. So I'm going to open the Metric AB, great plugin. Now if you look in your CSI folder, Zone Raw Effects Files, and open that, you can see you've got all of your effects parameters with the names all ready for you to place into a template. You could also subscribe and ask me if I've already got a Zone file for any particular plugin that you've got. Let's have a look at Metric AB being controlled by CSI. The user button selects the master channel, rotary push selects the plugin, the record buttons flick between A and B, solo on channel 8 is volume matching, flick between A and B again, and in the control modifier takes me to the next set of parameters, though I keep the A and B switch on channels 1 and 2. But from here, and I'm just going to volume match that again. I can now select different references with the fader or with the select button. A and B those. Or I can select different cues out of that playlist. Again, select button or fader. A, B those again. Slight volume difference, so solo to volume match. See that come down. Accurate volume matching is the only way to genuinely compare something. Plugin is brilliant for it. Very quick to switch back to the track I'm mastering and have the plugin come up in the correct place on the screen. Just going to get that so the needle's moving slightly. On all of the plugins, I use flip as bypass. So when I've made some modifications, I can just compare. So I know the plugin's bypassed when flip is lit up. Okay, it's slightly loud. It's a better balance. Straight back to the master track, open the AB plugin and volume match that now. It's the same sequence and process I use on any channel, master, compression, EQ, whatever. So if I go back to the track zone, using the track button, select the EQ track, 
to select the plugins on that track, none of them are on. I'll open Crave, bypass it using the flip button, back to the master track and the Metric AV plugin. So using CSI, using the controller like this, is a really quick way of navigating windows and navigating tracks. My philosophy on this isn't to replace the keyboard and mouse with a controller, it's to use the controller for the things it's best at. There's so many things you could do with CSI in a controller. You need to narrow that down to what you actually want to do or need to do. And having a system, like I have a system with the hotkeys, really helps narrow down the thinking on that. One of the most powerful things you use CSI for is editing envelopes. I'm in latch mode. You can't see much behind the plugin. We'll sort that out in a second. And every time I press scrub, that will redraw the envelope line to fit any parameter I've just moved. I've programmed scrub and hold to remove the plugin fascia and I can still carry on editing that particular plugin. Hopefully it's obvious I'm just doing this for the sake of demonstration. So the track's playing and I'm editing live. I would call this live mode and you could go back and re-edit that. I'll show you a great way of editing those points in a second. There's also another way of inputting the information which I will call more of a step mode using the jog wheel. So I'm going to delete these envelopes to the track zone, compression track, plugins, and I'm going to switch that to latch mode. Any parameter I move and then press scrub. Pressing scrub keeps redrawing the envelope line and fitting in as many parameters as you've moved or touched. I have the jog wheel set to step forward and backward to the grid line. I can change the grid lines with an expression pedal while I'm doing this. So if I choose an envelope, move a parameter, it will create a point there, move along with the jog wheel to where else I want to change a point. This is why I'm calling it more of a step input. Redraw the envelope line, pressing scrub, so now I can see this. And you can see me moving through the track to the grid line and creating a point by moving the envelope. Make the grid line smaller for a finer adjustment on the jog wheel. So there's two methods of creating your envelope points, live and step method. Now let's look at how easy it is to edit the envelope points with CSI. Jog wheel with the scrub modifier selects envelope lanes. Zoom modifier, the jog wheel steps from point to point on that envelope, as opposed to from grid line to grid line. Adding shift selects multiple points with the jog wheel. Option in the jog wheel magnifies the envelope lane and moves the points up and down half a dB. If I add shift, it's 0.2 dB. Press scrub to come back out of that and then reselect an envelope. Selecting the sidechain envelope. Zoom, jog wheel forward and backward moves to each individual point. Shift to select multiple points. Option and jog wheel moves the points up and down. Scrub to go back to selecting envelopes. Track to get an overview. Track and hold hides all envelopes and goes to trim read mode so you don't overwrite anything by accident. The envelope line describes the parameter first, forward slash, then the plugin. So I'm going to put a few plugins on on this channel, go into latch mode, and you can see that I've got the 670 up and I've moved a few parameters, redrawn them. Recently touched or adjusted parameters show up in red. And the only plugin I'm affecting is the 670. Even when I close this window, I'm only affecting the 670. What I can do is scroll up and down, and I use the EQ button to bypass other envelope lanes. You can only affect one plugin at a time because you can only have one plugin zone open at a time. That's the plugin on the screen. It took a bit of working out to be able to close the plugin and still be able to control the plugin. By doing this, I've now got a completely empty screen without a plugin fascia, still able to edit that plugin, and I've got all the envelopes clear to see. I'm really hoping this video leaves you with some insights into how powerful CSI can be. Uh, like and subscribe if it does. I'm going to fade out with me using CSI to do some mastering, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.